this is a matchup where Reed, Reed's going to want just the right mix of things. Yes. You know, you want to hit him with the discard on turn one, get a little pressure onto the board turn two, you know, maybe another discard spell plus a removal for their, uh, their lord, so to speak. Yeah, they're cost reducers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then, you know, hopefully grind them out from there. A little of the, of the veil in there to tax the resources even more. The thing about this storm deck is when it has one of its cost reducers, it's nuts. Yeah, it gets so unfair. You get to play Gifts for three mana, uh, and then basically start to combo the next turn as here's the Serum Visions off of Scalding Tarn. So now we'll see James Scry 2. Baral is among those cards. And because you get to play eight cost reducers, the likelihood of you having one, being able to do your thing, is pretty high. We'll see if it ever lives. You know, especially when you're playing it's Jund that has Bolt and Push and Abrupt Decay and Terminate, and Reed's even got a Maelstrom Pulse and a Kolingon's Command. You can kill those things pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. For Duke, it's a Blooming Marsh, and now it's an Inquisition of Kozla. He knows what he's up against right away. As you see, Gifts Ungiven, Paretic Ritual, Remand, Thought Scour, a Mountain, and an Island. And, and I really appreciate Reed helping us out. Oh, he knows. Spreading the hand out on Come the on. table for us. J James <laughs> clumps it up in one pile and <laughs> just <laughs> hands it to him. Pick a card, don't show the camera. <laughs> not, not Reed's first rodeo here in the feature match area. So Reed is going to select a card here. Of course, he cannot take Gifts on Given, but he can select Thought Scour, Remand, or Prior to Ritual. He's going to take Remand, write down the contents of James's hand, and James will draw a card. And I think he's left a cost reducer on top. Looks like a Baral. Mm -hmm. But he's going to go towards a Thought Scour targeting himself. So two cards are going to go to the graveyard, and now he'll draw picked up a copy of Past in Flames. This is an island. He'll simply pass the turn back over to Duke. Duke will draw. Got to get a body on the board here. He's got a swamp. Well, here's an Inquisition of Kozilek. So I think James was trying to hide the fact that he had a Baral. I'm sure so that he could maybe play it on the turn he was going to go off instead of just tapping out on turn two when you're playing against a deck that has Blooming Marsh, even though you may not know he's against Jund. Any Blooming Marsh deck has removal in it. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> those, those green, black, no removal decks. Yeah. Familiar with those? <laughs> so we will, uh, we will see what Reed wants to select this time. Again, he can't take Pass in Flames or Gifts on Given, but he can take Pyretic Ritual and Brawl. He's going to leave the Baral. Well, there's Thoughtseize. He might take it now. But it looks like he's going to take the more powerful Gifts on Given. No, I mean, that just tells us he has to have a removal spell in his hand. Yeah. This is what makes it really tough for Storm, as Flooded Strand is the draw. When you're playing against Jund or an Obzon or any deck that's Thoughtseize Inquisition, they can just rip you to shreds. Sure. I, I, I still feel like if Reed doesn't have some pressure on the board, like this turn, it's got to be a creature, or, or it's got to be maybe Liliana. Um, something to really pressure the opponent. It, it's just one top deck, one gift I'm given off the top, away from having the resources to go off. Mm -hmm. It's a stomping ground. And we might see Liliana this turn, as Reed did take two from the Ravnica duel. And now here is Liliana. So the powerful Planeswalker has arrived. Of course, the elevator is going up. And we will see each player discard a card here momentarily. James will discard Pass and Flames. Reed will discard Fatal Push. And now James is going to sacrifice a Flooded Strand. And Liliana just doubly good. Maybe triply, so, so to speak. So obviously, it, it, it's going to strip cards out of James' hand. Reed doesn't mind discarding some of these excess removal cards that he has. He, he wants to be able to kill, you know, the, the cost reducers, but he doesn't want redundant copies just sitting around in his hand not doing anything. Um, even if he discards all of his cost, re uh, all of his removal for the cost reducers, Lily is still there as the removal spell for that card. Mm -hmm. And the threat of the ultimate just takes away so many of the resources that James needs. Which is pretty real. Yes. As Liliana's up to five, both players will discard a land. Bloodstained Mire for Reed. Snow-covered Island for James. Now Reed will play a copy of Dark Confidant and simply pass the turn back. Mana Morphos to draw here for James Olerhead. That Confidant looks very good here, but it's a card that I think 
in their current format is just not very good right now. Okay. Any particular reason why? Uh, just, just, you don't want, against a lot of decks, you don't want just more cards. You want very specific cards. Okay. Uh, it doesn't pressure the opponent well. It doesn't draw specific cards. Uh, you've seen a lot of decks move away from Dark Confidant towards, um, like, like the new green black guy. Oh, uh, Grim Flare. Grim Flare, yeah. thank you. Uh, a, a card like that where it'll help you draw a specific card, it gets a lot more pressure on the opponent. You know, it, it has some synergies by putting potentially flashback cards into your graveyard. Yeah, Dark Confidant, not, I think, as good as it used to be. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to play it in any deck, I think the best place to play it is Jund. Sure. As opposed to Obzon. I think a lot of players have moved towards, at least for Obzon, Grim Flayer plus Lingering Souls plus Tarmogoyf. Yes. And then we've even seen some players this weekend playing like an Obzon deck that has Bobble and Street Wraith in it. And some play Death Shadow, some don't. So for now, we're going to see Dark Confidant reveal land. Electromancer does enter the battlefield, which means that Liliana probably wants to go down to take care of that. And now here comes Dark Confidant in for two. And this is the kind of game that Jun wants to play. As Reed will play a Black Cleave Cliffs and pass the turn back. You want to basically exhaust your opponent's resources yep. and then recoup your own. I'm, I'm going to go after your hand. I'm going to go after your creatures. I'm going to go after your life total a little bit. Chandra, Torch of Defiance reveal. <laughs> just just some of everything. Yeah. Reed going to fall down to 11 now. Couple of lands there for Duke and another Planeswalker. Liliana, of course, very active, playing a huge role in this game. Confidant's going to come across here for two. Olerhead's going to fall down to 14. And now here comes the Torch of Defiance. Yeah, this will really help up the clock. An extra two points a turn. Try to just get this game over with. Reveal Maelstrom Pulse, two to James Olerhead. He'll fall down to 12. Reed will play an Overgrown Tomb. Tick up his Liliana. Going to lose a Bloodstained Mire and pass the turn back as Olerhead's going to sacrifice a Flood of Strand. You might see a steam fence here from James in just a moment as he falls down to 11. And it's going to be really tough for him to win from this point. I think it starts with Gifts Ungiven. Yes. It's got to be multiple cards. Um, it could potentially be, be... He has a lot of lands. It could just be Ritual into Pastum Flames. Okay. Because then he can go Ritual, Ritual out of the graveyard. He has Manamorphos already in the graveyard. You know, he, he could go that way. But it, it would take a lot of good draw steps. Here's Serum Visions. Olerhead will draw. Remand in the Shivan Reef. Uh, let's put, I want to put those in yeah, the bottom. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> those are not what the doctor ordered. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's got it. I think it's, no, let, let him go. Let him go. I don't think those are helping. Empty the Warrens is the draw. That's not helping either. Ooh, goblins. <laughs> <laughs> not right now. Duke going to reveal to Confidant. Coligon's coming down to eight. Th those Warrens aren't very full. No, no, no. Let's empty them. <laughs> Two. Two. You're Two right. <laughs> not a lot going on there. Come on, goblins. Reed's getting a little low. Yeah, I don't think it's that scary at this point. It does make it easier for his opponent to potentially grape shot him out. Yeah, that's that's the thing that I would be scared of right now. Chandra's going to deal two more over to James, and now here's an attack for two, so he's going to fall down to seven when all is said and done. And remember, Duke does have a copy of Kolagon's command in hand. We might see a draw step Kolagon's command. We have a response. Pyretic Ritual. That was actually kind of the card he needed to draw. But because it's in his draw step, he's not going to get access to the mana. Yeah. So Reed's going to reveal Tarmogoyf. Six. A little late for that guy. Yeah. The, the game's going to be over next turn with or without it. So Reed can knock Olerhead down to one. Yes. Reveal Dark Confidant. Yeah, don't want that guy on the board. Nope. <laughs> Not at all. Here's an attack for two. Olerhead's going to fall down to three. 
Actually, going to fall down to one, excuse me, yep. because of the Chandra. Here's Tarmogoyf. There's a land. Plus, pass. If Volar Hedgehog's a ritual, this could get a little interesting. He drew Gifts Ungiven, which doesn't make it all that interesting. It's such a tease. It really is. It really, really is. One could argue the best card he could have drawn last turn and the worst card he could have drawn this turn. And Pass in Flames costs five to cast from the graveyard, which would be all of his mana. So he can't really do much of anything. And now the only way for uh, Oler had to be able to do this, I think, is Reed would have to make some horrifying mistake. Yeah, it's, it's not even possible at this point. Yeah, I, I don't know what horrifying mistake Reed could make. And, well, it's Reed. R Reed could choose random modes on all of his cards. <laughs> is there a six to reveal to Dark Confidant? There's not. No, that's why it was important for him not to play the second one. Yeah. Hey, there's an Olivia Voldaren in the deck. That's really about it. And as James was trying to get some given to see if there's a way out, there is not. And Reed Duke is going to win game number one here over James Olerhead. Jund up a game over Blue Red Gifts Storm. Craig, we're going to take a look at the sideboards here. We will start with Mr. Olerhead, who's got three Lightning Bolts, two Dispels, two Shatterstorm, two Wear Tear, two Blood Moon, two Leyline of Sanctity, another copy of Empty the Warrens. He's got one of those in the main deck. And then a copy of Echoing Truth. What do you like and why? All right, so these powerful enchantments are going to come in. I think Blood Moon can potentially surprise Reed. Uh, a lot of these decks, like John, just depend on getting all of their colors out of two lands. So a card like Blood Moon can potentially sh shut him down early. Uh, the Lee Line of Sanctity, which is the Lee Line that I confused with the Lee Line of the Void earlier. I totally <laughs> let that go. Yeah, I appreciate that. No problem. That didn't happen. Th there you go. This, Anywho, this is the white one. You got it. I, that's, that's definitely a card that he's interested in just seeing on the first turn. Just protection from all of the discard spells. Yep. And, and just give him the time that he needs. Uh, Liliana is terrible against Lee Line of Sanctity. You know, can't force the opponent to sack creatures. You can't ultimate them. Yep. Can do the, can do the first mode. But yes. But, th th you know, that's not what it's in the deck for. Yeah. You know? You want everything. So anyway, the, the powerful enchantments is definitely where I'd be. Okay. Uh, for Reed, three full Iron Mage, two Collective Brutality, two Kitchen Finks, two Grafdigger's Cage, two Leyline of the Void, two Ancient Grudge, a Shatterstorm of his own, and another copy of Grim Lava Mancer to go along with the one that he has in his main deck. So, so I, I think Reed's going to be looking to get some, of, some amount of these removal spells out of his deck. Uh, a card like I don't know, Termini, Termini is, is not so exciting. You, you want to make sure you have a, a little bit of this stuff. Uh, that's one of the reasons Lightning Bolt is always such a good card, because it's versatile. Yep. It can help him close, the, close out the game quick, and it's insurance against the cost reducers that he needs to kill out of his opponent's deck. Yep. Uh, a card like Maelstrom Pulse is kind of interesting, because it's it's an insurance policy against Empty the Warrens. Yep. So he, he probably wants to keep that in the deck, but it's just not a great card in general for him. Um, so I, I expect like Collective Brutality to come in out of the board. Uh, but not a whole lot of changes after that. Yeah, I mean, I, I see the fatal pushes where, you know, you don't love those. You kind of want to get some number of those out, but you still also want to leave some number of them in. Yes. To make sure that you can kill Baral and Goblin Electromancer. So I could see those leaving. Maybe he wants to have more creatures with Kitchen Finks. Maybe we'll want to see Leyline of the Void because this is a Gifts Ungiven uh, Pass in Flames deck. So we could see maybe those come in. Some, some decent options here for Duke. Yep, yep, yep. So we'll see how these players do sideboard. They're shuffling up, almost ready for game number two. So in the meantime, we're going to talk about Jacob Ball, who did win our last Invitational. we got another one of these things coming up very soon here in Roanoke, Virginia, at the end of June, beginning of July. But he's our most recent Invitational champion. Did win our Atlanta Invitational closeout last year. A couple ways you can go about getting his limited edition Invitational token, like playing in an Open, playing in a Classic tomorrow or all orders from StarCityGames.com, $5 or more. Congratulations to Jacob Ball. And you, you were almost a token, man. You were wow, almost a token. Uh, this, is, this is the backlash. Th this is the backlash of last <laughs> round. You were almost a token. Second place in the Invitational last year. Close. Close. You could have been that clue token. You could have been it. I guess you could have been anything you wanted to be, but you could have been that clue token. You know who else has a token? Well, congratulations to Max. For getting his token. Max does have a token. Yeah. And, and a Grand Prix Top 8 last weekend, yeah. too. Yeah. Max and Feeny, he's a, he's, a, he's a gamer. Reed Duke also has a token with Star City Games. He's got a lot more than that, though, as we take a look and learn a little more about Reed. Yeah, a little more than a token. <laughs> he's done some things in his career. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, besides great hair yep. and doing well in the Pro Tour. You know, he's got eight, eight open Top 8s, five wins. Pretty good conversion rate. 
uh, five invitational top eights for the W in Los Angeles many years ago. Okay, now let's see what he's got. Once beat Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past without dying or using a fairy. You seem skeptical again. That's you're, doable. You're making a face. That's doable. That's okay. doable. Okay. Worked several years as an assistant to a jeweler. No, that's true. Okay. And one of our favorites. So, so wait, just the second one. Okay. That means he's not doing that anymore. Yeah. I was not aware. He's doing okay in this area of life now. Okay. I think that he doesn't need to be just an assistant full on, to a jeweler. Full-on gamer. I think full-on gamer now. Okay. And was a guest host of the 2008 Sugarloaf Awards. Well, that's a big deal. That is a very big deal for the 27-year-old from Sugarloaf, New York. Yeah. Yeah. They get a lot of people there for the Sugar Loaf Awards. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. That's almost 10 years ago. Can you believe that? Man. You want to feel old real quick? 2018 is next year. And we're halfway through this one, basically. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So listing the year that comes after this year makes you feel old? Yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> I keep thinking for some reason it's like 2015. It's not. Oh, two ley lines. Hello. Hey, found one. There it is. That's going to make it pretty hard for James to win now. Yeah, well, and we'll see if James is brought <laughs> in. He, he has the, the echoing truth yep. out of his board. We'll yeah. see if he, he was astute enough to bring that in. Duke with an overgrown tomb as it, his first land. It looks like James also has the backup plan, the, the empty the warrants in his hand. I think that's, well, that's probably a better way to go now, given yeah. the circumstances. Oh, clearly. Yeah. Still not an easy road to home. No, not at all. Not at all. Going to sacrifice the Flood of Strand here for a land. He's down to 19. See if he's got a cost reducer. All right, Electromancer. Maybe hope it lives for a turn. Pass the turn back. Maybe Duke doesn't have much of anything. Well, he pulled forward a Dark Confidant there, so we'll... And, and this empty the warrens, uh, there's some gobos in that there cave this time. This time there might be some gobos. I'm not sure what kind of the density of rituals and mana morphoses looks like right now for James Olerhead, but a turn three after the warrens for eight or ten might be able to get the job done. We'll yep. see. For now, well, Duke's got another sideboard card that's really good. Oh, no. There's no gobos in them there, Hills. No. <laughs> Collective brutality. <laughs> which will be escalated once is his play. He'll take a look at James's hand. Not only is he going to lose his Electromancer, he's also going to lose his best card. A hand of another copy of Goblin Electromancer, an Empty the Warrants, a desperate ritual, aptly named, and a sleight of hand. <laughs> you like that name? It is a good name right now. <laughs> yeah, and, and Reed's considering uh, what he wants to take here. When, when he already has the Lee line in play, the scariest cards are cards like Empty the Warrants. But if he's able to attack his opponent's hand enough, the empty of the warrants doesn't even really matter. And potentially Reed already has a Maelstrom Pulse in his hand to deal with that. Yep. Here's a sleight of hand. Take a look at a couple here. Ley line is Sanctity, a little late. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> going to go to the bottom. <laughs> thanks, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah, it's going to go to the bottom. And now he's Serum Visions with a Blood Ooh, Moon. All the sideboard cards coming yeah. up. Yeah. James's are coming at the wrong time. Reed's have come at a great time. Ulrich had kept a land and a lightning bolt on top. Over to Duke, we're going to go. And Duke is savvy enough to know that these Storm decks, they do sideboard Blood Moon because they can play it as early as turn two yep. off of a Desperate or Pyretic Ritual. So if he can search for basics, he will find the opportunity to do so. For example, I think he has a Verdant Catacombs in the hand right now. It would not surprise me one bit to see him search for his forest. For now, he'll play Blackleaf Cliffs. And is there a follow-up? There is in Liliana of the Veil. Vale. That's going up. Going to start attacking the hand. And now he's going to lose his Verdant Catacombs. And James will lose his Gifts on Given. It's Exile thanks to Leyline of the Void. To Olerhead will go. He'll play a Scalding Tarn, and he can play a Blood Moon now if he wants. Now's the time. I'm not sure how good it is, but it's the best thing that he can really do this turn. Once again, players in the UBM Standard Challenge, your pairings have made their way back to the Yeah, there's actually even the question of 
hey, maybe this Blood Moon is just better to discard to the opposing Lily. Yep. Like, he only has so many resources to work with. And Reed's decision of taking that ritual is just looking very sharp right now. Yeah, right now it really is. So here's Blood Moon. But it's not a Blood Moon I think that Olerhead is enthused about, as Duke is going to draw a card here. Elevator going up on Liliana. Electromancer and Raging Ravine down. I think we're going to see Dark Confidant here in just a moment. We do. And Duke is empty-handed. Olerhead has one card in hand and empty the warrants. He'll draw. Uh, he could make two. There's gobbos in them there, Hills. He could make two whole <laughs> goblins right now. He drew a fourth <laughs> land. Uh, those poor goblins. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I don't think this matchup is very good for Storm. Just... Yeah, Jun has the right mix. Yeah. You know, the, the, uh, the cost reducers are never going to stick on the board for a couple of turns. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Attacking the hand is a very effective way of, of stalling the Storm deck. You know, and, and we've already talked about how good Lily is of just building and building against them. Fulminator Mage going to come down here for Duke. I'm a little surprised to see the Fulminator Mage, but it's possible Duke was just like, there's enough bad cards in my deck that I don't want anymore. Yep. Yeah. Or just, just stone raiding the, the Storm deck for a turn. You're already taxing the resources in so many ways that this is a, another avenue that just buys you time, and that's all the Jun deck needs. Makes sense. We're going to see a couple copies of Serum Visions here. We saw the first one scry two cards to the bottom. The second one here from Molarhead is going to also scry two cards to the bottom. A Lightning Bolt in hand right now. I think you got to kill Dark Confidant. Yeah. No good attacks, of course, because it's a 2-2 two -two against two one ones. But Duke is only going to get one card a turn now. So that's a step in the right direction for Mr. Rollerhead. <laughs> Look, it's baby steps right now. Yeah, no. He... It's baby steps. You got to crawl before you can walk. That Liliana is the real problem. Yeah, and, and, you know, Reed's like, hey, do I ultimate this? Do I go up with it and then ultimate it later and then still have it on the board? Mm -hmm. That's it, the real question. It all works. Yeah. One away from ultimate right now, I believe. And then, even if he could ultimate it, would he even do it? Like I said, don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. I don't. We didn't get a good look at what Reed drew. Nope. That's K the only thing we don't know. K KG with that one. <laughs> but it's giving him some pause. Yeah, yeah. He's he's thinking about this. Okay. The Verdant Catacombs. Okay. Yeah, and he, he, he did decide to go up. Um, My apologies. Liliana it, ultimate six, not yeah. seven. And, and, and James can knock the Lily down to, to six again, <laughs> but he's losing a lot in the pro. You know, the, Reed's just such, in such the driver's seat here. Yeah. See, what does Duke want to do now? I would start by ultimating Lily. I would split it three lands and Blood Moon two goblins in the land. Okay. And, I, like, there's no way James can win off of one land. Just can't do it. So he has to keep the three lands. Which turns on your... Which, which turns up the, on the Raging Ravine, and, and then Reed can really get the clock going. Okay. And he doesn't have to worry about the goblins coming back at him because they were sacrificed to the Liliana effect. Well... It's time to split them up. Separate all permanent target player controls into two piles. That player sacrifices all permanents in the pile of his or her choice. What a powerful Planeswalker. Average. Second best Planeswalker of all time? Yeah, I, I think uh, by the metric of, of seeing how they're played, Yes. Right, Jace is obviously number one. Yeah, Jace is number one. Liliana probably number two? Yeah. I think that's right. I think that's right. I'm trying to think of, like, there's the Elspeths, there's Karn. Oh, there's a lot of really good Planeswalkers. What makes Liliana so good is that it costs three, and it does everything you want it to do. Yeah. Well, you see the split there. It was lands versus permanence, basically. Oh, he went four and, yeah. and three. And... And now we're going to get Liliana off the battlefield. 
Yeah, I'm actually shocked that James didn't keep the four lands. Well, here comes Fulminator Mage. I'm the, the plan of one gobbo against all my opponent's resources. Well, I think the plan is I hope you draw all green cards. Well, he didn't attack that. Time. I am surprised by that. I think it's it's meaningless. Yeah. You know, one way or the other, but. Manamorphos the draw. Well, he's well, now he's going to attack. Okay, so I think he just missed the attack last turn. If the plan is to, you know, draw a critical mass, he can try. He doesn't have the lands. Well, you got to draw some of those, too. There's a lightning bolt. They find a red source. Reed can't cast anything. No, nope. can't cast the green cards. There's a Vernon Catacombs pass. He doesn't need to cast the green cards. Island isn't it. Yeah, keep attacking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't go. We can't be halfway. No, of course. Either we're always attacking or we're chump locking immediately. We can't go halfway with this. No, of course. Yeah. 13 to 8. Pyretic Ritual. So we need a red source and an empty the Warrens. Yes, then it's the nuts. In again. I, I would probably stop attacking now if I'm James. Maybe if I draw the I Drew Gifts. Like, I don't. Uh, I guess if you're at six, you're in double bolt range, so it doesn't matter. Draw. Read Drew an Inquisition. Well, he, early you might be able to chump block. But later, Reed's definitely going to use one of his removal spells that's just cluttering up his hand. Yeah. Now, this is interesting, right? Because James has three rituals. He's got a Manamorphose. He's got a Lightning Bolt. He's got a Gifts Ungiven. Now, Reed cannot take Gifts Ungiven. So does he want to take Manamorphose, or does he want to take a Lightning Bolt? Yeah, and you see him thinking about it. Yeah. I didn't think this game would last this long after Lily ultimate. I'm a little surprised. I'm a little surprised that we got here. And and James is right on the brink of of potentially winning it. Yeah. He will take Metamorphos. Pass a turn back. Draw. Do not attack. <laughs> Good. I would not attack there. I think Reed has a fatal push for the token. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it mattered if he yeah. attacked or not. In. Got to draw a red source, James. Oh, Liliana back. That's pretty good. Oh, there's, there's cards to discard. Easy discard for James. <laughs> James wants any land. That's a redraw. He found a hollow. Oh, oh no. <laughs> the hollow found it the battlefield uh. tap. Could even do it untapped for the Blood Moon for a red source of mana. And that is going to do it. Reed Duke's going to win this match over James. Allerhead. Jun going to take care of Blue Red Gift Storm. And for the Duke, he is.